<clears throat> Hello, everybody. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, hold on. I didn't go on Instagram. Oh. <laughs> I didn't give a swipe up. Hold on. Um, gotta let everybody know. Gotta let everybody know we're here. Anyways, it's funny. I thought of it right, right as we started. Okay. <laughs> this is awkward enough doing it by yourself, let alone doing it while people are watching. All right, make sure there's nothing in my teeth. All right, good. I just had my little morning smoothie. Okay. <clears throat> Swipe up to join. I'm live on Twitch practicing my violin. Would you please put yes. the little swipe up link, Absolutely. Lindsay? So, thank you. No problem. So everybody say good morning to Fish. Good morning. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you so much. Lindsay's the best. She's bringing me my water. She's doing my swipe up links. We are a well-oiled running machine. I Maybe not well-oiled, but we run. So. We run. <laughs> we work, if that makes sense. We get the job done. Okay, so first of all, I want to say thank you so much for everyone who joined us. Um, I've been enjoying streaming so much. It's like literally my new favorite hobby. <laughs> like, I don't know. I just think that's so exciting when I find something new that I love that involves you guys and that involves things that I'm passionate about. Like the costume stream the other day was so fun and I couldn't believe how many people came and joined us. We got so much done and uh, I think we'll do another one of those. Don't you think, Lynn? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do another one. Because we got to make some masks. I love it that we were so careful not to say song names. And yet here we are. We're like, this pirate coat <laughs> and these masks. We're oh, like, well, okay. I saw a couple people posting. They're like, so it looks like this song's confirmed. So I'm like, well, you know, there's going to be plenty of the show that will be a so surprise. Many surprises. So many surprises. It's going to be great. So first of all, um... <clears throat> I'm going on tour. We're going on tour. So you guys have to please come out to see the show if you feel comfortable. I know some people are still not quite comfortable with that, but um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, but it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. It's a great show, the Artemis Tour. Um, so I hope to see you guys all. You can type exclamation tour into the chat and you can see if there's any dates near you. It's a U.S. tour. Um, also, if you type exclamation COVID, you can see a link that will give you facts about the COVID protocols uh, for the tour. <clears throat> okay. Also, guys, if you do exclamation prime, sorry, all these exclamations, all these links, but you can subscribe with prime. It gives you one free subscription per month with Amazon Prime. So, um, <laughs> Of course, use it for me. And last but not least, um, I still have costumes up for auction. They're up for a few more days. I think they're gonna be ending on Friday. And I think I'm gonna do a little live stream while the auction is ending. That would be kind of fun. That would be fun. Yeah. Maybe that should be when we do our next costume one. Yeah, maybe we'll do costumes on Friday. Okay, costumes on Friday, and then we'll end or start with uh, the costume auction. Perfect. Yeah, that'll be fun. So, join me on Friday for costuming. Um, by the way, I have to show you, I got some new masks. They're really cute. Okay. I have a slight ingrown fingernail. It's really oh. frustrating when I get that. It doesn't happen very often, but I'm like, ooh. Does that happen because you're playing? I know you keep your fingernails really short for that reason. Yes, I have to keep them short. And I think the other day I cut one a little too short and then, you know, what that Ouch. means. So anyways, I'm going to sensitive. Second finger, I'd show you, but it's my middle finger. I don't want to be rude. Um, live stream on IG or TikTok? Um, I like live streaming here the best because I can have my little setup. I can see your comments better. I can um, set up my microphone. So, but I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'll do a little one. Okay. It's so cold right now. Why am I so cold? All right, well guys, start requesting your songs. I'm excited. Okay, do we have a COVID vex? Do we have to have a COVID vex to attend the show? I don't think so. Um, we, it, it's per venue. It's per venue, yeah, every, and it, that depends on the state laws. Um, so. They can call the venue and get information. Also, exclamation mark COVID will link an FAQ and they can go from there. 
yeah, you can see all the details will be there. Um, Cause like I said, I just don't know per state what the laws are. Um, okay, someone's requesting underground. Oh man, when you guys request some of the um, bonus tracks, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even remember how to play it. Cause for the bonus tracks, I never play them live. So I literally played them in the studio to record and then never again. So sorry if I maybe I'll go back and look at some of those like uh, I forgot. A bonus track violin stream. Yes, yeah. I should do that. A bonus track violin stream where I go back and review all of them. That'd be fun. Okay, so we're starting with underground. Lots of them. Oh my gosh, Guardian Crystal Eyes Arena. Woo, okay. My hands are so cold. I hope I can even play. It is cold in here. Today. It's really cold. Why? Come on. <laughs> Put that in there. Um, 
Let me even think. How does that song go? I remember I would come out and play it on the Evanescence tour. I remember Amy's part. I can't remember mine. <laughs> think about that. I'll like put it in the back of my brain and let it simmer. Isn't it interesting how your brain works? Like you will actually keep thinking about something if you think about it and then like move on. Yeah. Like your the back of your mind or whatever part of your brain will keep thinking about it. That's why they say it's good to like think about something that you were interested in before you go to sleep or something you want to think about or like some, something you want to manifest or something you're grateful for like because those thoughts will you know the last thoughts you think of before you sleep they'll kind of sit in there anyway I think that's really cool that is why I do my manifesting before I go to bed and my gratitude journal <clears throat> um I should talk about this sometime I feel like I've come up with a really good way that I like a new way of manifesting like practicing manifesting that I really like so maybe sometime I'll talk about that if you guys are interested because I think it's really important to practice those kind of things. They don't yeah. just happen. Um, I'm trying to think of high-low. Uh, I just... Oh. I just don't remember the key. ba 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 I got it. I'm definitely in the wrong key. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I, I played it in a different key actually first than was on the album. Like, I learned it in the wrong key. Isn't that funny? That stunk. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to move on. We're going to forget high-low for a second. Um, I'm going to go on to... <clears throat> I'm going to do um, Round Table Red. Let's kick it off with something fun and energetic. <laughs> Thank you. 
one life, one love. <clears throat> I saw some people writing in the comments like the words, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. <laughs> Woo. Um, it was fun working with Lecrae to write this. He actually, we like, have, I've still never met Lecrae. Isn't that crazy? Like artists a lot of times will do that. You'll work together, but from afar, like he was in, I think, Atlanta or something. And so he, uh, I think we jumped on the phone really quickly and he's like, I would love to hear just like, you know, what you want this song to embody. And um, like I, I shared with him a couple quotes, like one of my favorite movie quotes is um, from Cool Runnings. And it's when the coach says, well, one of the players on the team, the bobsled team, he finds out that his coach had cheated in the past at the Olympics. And he was like, goes to his coach and he's like, why did you cheat? You already had four gold medals. Why did you do it? Why would you cheat? And the coach says, um, a gold medal is a wonderful thing, but if you're not enough without it, you'll never be enough with it. And I just think that's such a profound thought about life. Like a lot of times we think I'll be happy when, you know, I'll be happy if I get a gold medal. I'll be happy if I win that Grammy or if I'm, you know, pretty or if I, if I get my lips done or if like whatever that is that we think, you know. I'll be happy when that's never true because if you're not enough without the extra things you'll never be enough with them anyway so he in the so I sent that quote to Lecrae I sent um, I'm trying to remember um, all the different things I sent I just sent a bunch of statements and quotes and sentences that I wanted this song to embody and so you'll hear things like he talks about a gold medal he talks about running races he talks about um, yeah anyways he did such a good job I loved the rap he made and um, also, Rivers Cuomo sings on that song. Um, let's see. We're, we're definitely rather meet people working. Yeah, I know. I always like to meet artists when I work with them. Like, it's fun. Like, ZZ Ward and I wrote Hold My Heart Together. That was really fun. And she has such a unique voice. I knew I wanted her to sing it. Um, you know, it was fun meeting Lizzie Hale in the studio when she came to record. Like, we sat and talked for a little bit. I told her what the song's about and how... Um, you know, we sat and chatted before she went and recorded and then I got to sit there and listen to her sing it And I can just remember as she went up She's going higher and higher and I was like, there's no way she's gonna hit that high note and then she just me. I was like, ooh, I can still I just got chills just remembering that moment. It was pretty magical um, You know and then it's always fun to like get to make the music videos with people. So yeah, I I always definitely prefer to work with people in person, but you know, sadly, that just doesn't always get to be the case because artists are everywhere. Sometimes they're on tour, like Sabrina Carpenter. You know, I called and talked to her on the phone because she was on tour when she recorded The Grinch, you know. So it just is always different. Um, do I like Calvin Harris? I do like Calvin Harris. He's great. Um, um, let's see. Oh, I got chills when you're here, too. Um, so, ooh, someone's birthday. I see people wishing happy birthday. So happy birthday. I don't see who it is. Um, <clears throat> okay. Love Sabrina, yes. We play, um, okay, let's do the arena. Book club, people are asking about book club. I will start book club up again. I've just been really busy getting ready for tour. I think it might be one of those things that I start it once I'm on tour. That's a good idea. Yeah, maybe I'll get the dancers to do it with me. I don't know, we'll see. Good luck. Yeah, they don't like to wake up in the morning. <laughs> until showtime so that might not happen but um you know I do have a couple of different I have a different group of friends that were like we want to do the book club with you it looks so fun and so I don't know maybe I'll have multiple groups of friends do it okay let's do the arena
funny. I don't know if you see this, Lindsay, in your mind at all, but there's a part in the song where I always in the show would do this like kick. Do you know the spot yes. I'm talking about? Yes. And the dancers would always like, if I could see them off stage at that spot, they'd always kick. Because <laughs> I would do it. Because I will say there's a lot of things, even when the dancers aren't on stage, I like to kind of have an idea of what I'm going to be doing. Like some, some moments of the show, I'm literally just jumping around and having fun. But other times, like even the pieces where I'm by myself, they're very thought out. Like I'm going to... I'm gonna run across the stage here, I'm gonna spin here, I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna kick here. Um, Cause it just helps me be able to focus on the performance and not so much on what am I gonna do next, you know? Um, so yeah, there's certain parts of the show where I do it and I would see the dancers backstage every time. <laughs> cause it was, very, it was a very aggressive kick, I guess. Cause everybody remembered, like Lindsay's even like, oh yes, I know the kick. <clears throat> um, Let's see here. I saw lots of people always, as always, saying Derek Hoff, the best. Love Derek. Um, oh, someone's here on their lunch break. Thanks for joining us for your lunch break. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Oh, your dad saved me. Oh, that's so sweet of you to say. I wonder if my dad was a teacher, so I wonder if he was your teacher or, um, or just someone that you knew. Uh, yeah, my dad taught uh, high school students. In seminary, <sighs> sing something. No, not today. That's you. Oh, that's me. Oh gosh. Your Instagram story to post the third day. Oh, thank okay. you. Yep. There we go. We got it posted Instagram. Thanks. You know how it like hiccups sometimes? It just, yeah, it just doesn't quite yeah. make it. All right. Okay, we're gonna play. Now I'm gonna play. I'm gonna. <laughs> requested Mirage and I feel like playing Mirage so I'm gonna do it songs for the live show that I just really enjoy. I'm like, oh, you know, I'll pick them for the set, but other times I'm like, I just really want to play that one. That one's just really fun. 
And then it's always so hard to take them out of the set when it's time to like, we've played it a lot, you know, it's time to take it out. I'm like, no! Like taking out Phantom from after the Evanescence tour was really hard. I was like, that one's so fun to play, but it's time to put new songs in. Um, okay, someone was like, let's hear Lindsay play a classical piece. Okay, in a second I will do that. I will do that. Um, and But first I'm gonna play um, Elements. I'm gonna throw it back to an oldie but a goodie. So also, also really fun. Um, I should mention too that I have a couple costumes up for auction right now on eBay. So you can type in um, exclamation auction into the chat and um, in the, it will bring you a link that will take you and you can see my Elements costume, which is like the one that I wore in the fire scene. Um, it's the, the shirt, the little vest. It's actually a really cool little um, fake leather, vegan leather um, jacket with like this little hood on it, super cute. And then I even found the little headband that it, like I literally think I bought it at Claire's back in the day. <laughs> like it's got little feathers on it, but it was perfect for the, you know, anyways. Um, so anyways, that's fun. Also, there's like the Shatter Me and Lost Girls dress up there. The Shatter Me and Lost Girls ballerina shoes. Um, the little fox from Lose You Now. There's like a lot of really fun stuff up there as well as one of my tour costumes from the Brave Enough tour. So, elements.
Um, gosh, I saw some questions in there. Oh, someone, Tyler, was asking, have I ever sped up, like, played a song, sped it up for the recording, and then kept it in the same key just because it was too fast to play? Um, the only time I've done that is with Pizzicato, because uh, I can't do double, I mean, I've just never learned double hand Pizzicato. Um, and so for like a Mirage, the I played that. So I played it that speed and then we sped it up. So it was bucket dick a 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 dick because I was like, I wouldn't, yeah, I just have never learned. By the way, if you notice, um, I said I can't do double hand pizzicato and then I rephrased it. I've never learned double hand pizzicato. And I was recently reading a book. By the way, I love self-development books. I just think that they constantly keep me in a good place and they help me like kind of have good perspective on my brain and my, my mental health. And so anyways, I was reading this book. It's called Letting Go. It's really good. But he was saying that I can't is a replacement for I won't or I haven't, you know, and it kind of changes your perspective on things. Like it's not that I can't do double hand pizzicato. It's just that I haven't put in the time to learn it. You know, and it really makes you think about a lot of your choices more because rather than just convincing yourself that you can't do it, you're like, no, it's that I won't do it. Do I want to do it? Do I want to put in that time? Um, so anyways, side note, um, every time you say I can't, say I won't, and it makes you think about what you want to put your time into. Anyways, I thought that was really cool. Um, also, can, can you hang from me? You can hang from your hair. You can do anything. That's actually true. When I did that, I thought to myself, I am, if I could do this, gosh, when I'm giving birth, I'm going to be like, no problem. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm sure that there, that has nothing in comparison with childbirth. I was, that was a joke. Um, oh, I see a lot of people saying like, oh my gosh, like, hi, hi. I didn't know you were on Twitch. So for anyone that's here for the first time, a welcome. Thanks for being here. Um, and welcome to our Twitch family. Also, did hair hanging hurt? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. It hurt me, Lindsay, and I wasn't even doing it. Yeah, Lindsay was there with me every time I went and practiced. I think I went once by myself. Yeah. And it was, and then I literally called her and I was like, I can't do this ever again by myself. Like, just the, I needed someone there to help me like emotionally just be just like tell okay. just tell me that I was gonna be okay like hair hanging was the most painful everyone's like oh well, you know you must have done something to help with the pain that's what I thought like I thought that the hair style would help with the pain no anyways it was excruciatingly painful um you can see all about that on my youtube channel I did a vlog it was, you know, and I will say it helped me remember that I can do hard things. Like, and I think that that was something I needed at that time was to challenge myself and realize I can do hard things and I can make something beautiful out of something that's hard. And sometimes in life we do find beauty and pain. Okay, I'm going to stop trying to make everything into a motivational speech. Um, also, I saw some people commenting in um, about the Elements music video. Um, I think that if you haven't seen it, I have a behind the scenes of the Elements music video and someone was asking, no, it was not Andy with me in Home Depot, but I wish I'd had him there. I was literally running around Home Depot because I wanted to have a scene where I was playing in front of fire. Oh my gosh. Like if I wanted to do that now, just be, it's different when you're an artist that is just trying to make it and like no one knows who you are. You can kind of just do things and figure it out. But once you have like a management team and there's liability and you know, people can sue you, things change. <laughs> so I could no longer do this. But back in the day, one, I didn't know any better. And two, no one knew who I was, so it didn't matter. So I literally was going through Home Depot and I was asking them, I was like, I want to make a fire. And I, what will help the flames be the highest? What, what lighter fluid or what, you know? Anyways, I ended up getting a rain gutter you know, that goes on a house. I bought one of those, filled it with like lighter fluid and like all kinds of flammable liquids. <laughs> <laughs> I went in an alley, no joke. I was in an alleyway behind, um, my friend had a t-shirt warehouse. And so I went behind his warehouse. I filled this thing up. And then I also got a bunch of PVC pipes and I made this little PVC pipe, you know, rectangle that was like a three dimensional, almost like cube. 
and I hung burlap from it. Wow. Like this is, I don't know, it worked though, and it actually wow. looked really cool. And so I had a ton of burlap, and we just, between each take, we'd tie on new strips of burlap, and then we'd light the lighter fluid on fire so there's a flame coming up from the ground. Also, we sprayed water on the ground so that it reflected and it made, anyways. And then we'd quickly light all the burlap pieces of fabric on fire. And I would just play until the fire of the burlap went out. But look, you and I can recreate that in the backyard. We don't have to tell anybody. That's true. We can do this. True. We could do this. Um, my neighbors might call the cops. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but it like it's hilarious some of the things I did I'm like I can't believe I did that and I can't believe the cops didn't show up like to be like what are you doing you pyro anyways I just was very determined and I <laughs> didn't understand some of the liability things and um I remember the thing on the last take we just like threw all the burlap on it and we lit the whole thing on fire and I was literally like oh my gosh it's gonna fall over on me I was scared <laughs> um and by the end the whole pvc pipe thing was like melting and falling wow. apart but it was pretty cool um pyromania yeah. with Lindsay. nope i'm not a pyromania well you would probably think so seeing think all the so. things i've lit on fire on accident um sometimes on purpose sometimes on accident um also the water scene was literally just a sprinkler head i had two friends holding a hose it was sprinkler heads and i was like we just put a light behind me and i was in a, their yard and like we just filmed it in slow motion. It looked epic though. It's just amazing how sometimes you can get away with just the most basic things and make it look great. And I sometimes have to remind myself that now because I just want to make these like epic stories and stuff like till the light goes out. Anyways, um, yeah. And we had like, for example, for sleepwalking, we had a rain machine, you know. But also that's because we had to cover nine people in water, not just one. It's a little different. Anyways, okay, I'll stop talking. The famous umbrella fire. Yes, yes, I know. Yes. Lindsay was there for that too. Oh, yes. So if you want to see more about the um, behind the scenes of elements, that is like a really good example of purest Lindsay creativity in its rawness. So um, also, yes, someone says freezing question mark. I was freezing in the water scene. I was like soaking wet at night in Utah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna keep playing some music. Sorry about the long wait. Can you do a Disney song? Street. That was such a fun video to make. Still to this day, one of my favorite tour memories. So we are going to do it again on this next tour. So just wait to see what we do. Actually, I've already given it away. It's going to be Harry Potter, I think. Okay, someone keeps asking for classical. Oh, okay, that was good. Like a little bit, ah, to play classical, but here we go.
um, okay, there's a couple fan questions I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and answer. Um, I'm getting a pop-up. No, I do not want to optimize my PC right now. Not now. No, not update. That's timing. No, no updates. No updates. Okay. What? Do you need help? No, I think, okay. I think I told them to go away. <laughs> um, bravo! Bravissimo! Thank you so much. Um, okay, so some of the questions are, um, how did I meet BB Rexa? I'm trying to remember the first time. Oh, I met her at a radio show. We were both performing. Um, Uh-oh, someone's at my door. Hold on. There's a lot happening right now. So I met her at a radio show, and she was performing after me. Or No, she, she opened, weird, BB Rexa opened for me at a radio show. But um, she came backstage afterwards. Um, oh! Okay, let them in. Come in! Okay. Um, <laughs> they're not here for me, they're here for my roommate. Um, Luna, come here. Come here, Luna. Oh, no. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot happening in a second. In a yeah, just hold Miss Luna. Um, okay, uh, oh yeah, it was funny because she came back to like me to say hi and we were chatting. And I have a picture of us and it's hilarious because I am wearing a Pokemon like Pikachu hat and she's wearing a shirt with just pasties on it. Like, so she's like full, like, like it looked like Beauty and the Nerd, like for sure. It was just such a funny picture, but BB's super nice. I've had, um, you know, we've <laughs> kind of done a song together in a way. She sampled one of my songs. Um, and, uh, oh my gosh, oh, Luna's freaking out. Upstairs. Luna! Um, yeah, sorry, my train of thought is all over the place. Okay. Um, so, uh, someone else says, who's my favorite violinist? Um, I probably will say Vanessa May because I just, like, she inspired me so much when I first saw her stuff and the way she, like, wore cool outfits and she was beautiful and she would play and she made some cool videos. So, um, Vanessa May really inspired me a lot. Um, can you talk about filming Lord of the Rings music video? Um, yes. So, I, at the time, was dating Devin Graham. This is way back in the day. And, um, and let's see, I'll play a little bit for you. to like my childhood because my dad read me all of the Hobbit books and the Lord of the Rings books when I was a kid so it's like that has so much nostalgia for me and I loved the movies um so yes okay so made that medley and then it just so happened like just pure happenstance Devin got hired by some some guy in New Zealand to go film some stuff and so I went as his camera assistant because I knew just enough to be able to like you know, be a second camera or hand him lenses, you know, I knew enough about that. So I was his camera assistant and we were filming stuff for this, this guy and we would literally be driving and we'd see a pretty lookout and I'd be like, pull over, pull over. And then I had this, the white dress in the back of the car that we had rented and I'd literally change in the back of the car and then jump out on the side of the road. So it's not like we were in these vast, like empty locations. We were literally right off the highway and cars are passing like on the other side as I'm like standing on these epic cliffs in New Zealand playing. And yeah, sometimes cars would like slow down for sure being like, what is happening? But um, yeah, super cool. And uh, let's see, oh, Nana's Nonsense, gifting subs. Thank you so much. Love you, Nana. Um, what camera did you use, do you use when you vlog and stuff? Honestly, when I vlog, it's usually just my iPhone. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. oh, someone just got gifted a sub, they're excited, yay, um, hugs from Brazil, hugs right back to you in Brazil, okay, I'm gonna play, um, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play,
like crystallize. upstairs or their friend whoever it was um <laughs> let's see okay so oh i saw someone talking about mirage in the comments and i forgot while i was playing mirage i was actually going to um i was going to tell a funny story about that music video one it was really funny because i filmed that right before dancing with the stars and i released it during while i was on the show and at the time i was like really having a hard time getting like you know into the music and being like what is the word sensual in my dancing being like emotive and passionate you know i just would feel so awkward because i'm like you know dancing with mark and there's cameras everywhere and i really had a hard time getting into character and then mirage came out and mark th that day at rehearsal 
the very next day after it came out, he comes up and he holds his, his phone up to me with Mirage on the screen. And he's like, you have no problem being like passionate and getting into the music. He's like, I don't want to hear it anymore because look at this video. Because in that video, I'm very like snaky and like, you know, being like a, what is the word? A sorcerer or whatever. So he's like, yeah, I don't want to hear that anymore. I need to, I need to see it on the dance floor. It was kind of funny. Also, um, it was really funny in that music video because I had this idea that I wanted to be completely gold for the last scene. So Michelle, my makeup artist, spent like, we, it took like almost two hours to paint me completely gold and do that makeup look and get my hair gold and everything. And as she was doing it, in person, it looked so freaky. I can't even tell you. I looked really creepy and I was so shiny and just like fully gold. And I was like, this was a huge mistake. Um, and I remember feeling so dumb and almost like to the point where I was embarrassed when I walked back on set. Cause I was like, everyone's going to be like, what the heck did she do? Um, but I was like, you know what? It took two hours to get me like this. We're almost out of time. I do not have the time to take all of this off and start on a new look. So I was like, you know what? We're just going to go with it. And I'm going to pretend that this is cool. And so I went out there, I owned it, I did it. And for some reason on camera, it ended up looking really beautiful. Like it looked like the camera like softened it or something, but it was just funny because in person, I'll have to post on my Instagram like a picture of what it looked like in person because it was not attractive. Thank yeah. heavens for movie magic. Yeah, someone's like, it's really cool looking. Carly, are you the, were you the one that was in treatment with my dad? I wonder if, uh, I think that might be, I think that might be you. Um, someone really wants to hear Katy Perry roar. So I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> All right, here we go.
someone was saying, uh, hold on, let me go back and find the comment. Where is it? Um, Komori B Art says, um, do I write down all my notes in annotation form or do I play by ear? I actually write by ear and play by ear, but all this stuff, my sister actually transcribes it into sheet music so that other people can learn it. But for me, I just play by ear and learn, write everything by ear. Um, okay, I'm gonna play, uh, do I play any other instruments? No, I just play the violin. I've thought about learning cello. I've thought about learning a lot. I've thought about a lot of things, okay? I think about <laughs> every day. I'm like, I should do this. And every once in a while something sticks. Um, sheet music is overrated. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm a terrible sight reader, so I agree. But also, it has its place. I wish I was a better sight reader. Um, you've followed me since 2014. Shake and bake. Thank you so much. Fan of the opera medley. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. This is a medley that I wrote that's like a, it's like a, rock version of Phantom of the Opera. It's super fun, but I'm just, you know, wish I had my guitar friends right around me. Okay. So, um, 
Let's see, I saw someone saying that they related to my sight reading dilemma and they were saying that um, it's really hard for dyslexic, dyslexic people to sight read, so you can't even say the word. Um, and yes, that's true. And then I saw someone else saying, oh, I wish I could play better by ear. I'm a great sight reader, but I can't play by ear. You know what? It's like everybody has their own gift in it and you just find out, like you work on your weaknesses, but really lean into your strengths. You know, like because I was a bad sight reader, it made me a great player by ear. But I can't even tell you how many times I wished I was a good sight reader, especially to this day. Like I've been in the studio for other people and they'll hand me sheet music because they just expect that I can play it. And literally I will start to sweat and I have like I get so much anxiety telling them like actually this this is I'm going to have to sit and practice this for a while. Like I didn't know you were going to do this, you know, so like anyways, you know, so you know, and in orchestras, it, there's been so many different situations. So lean into your strengths and practice your weaknesses. Um, because every strength can be a huge, like a huge thing for you. Like I never knew that learning by ear would, you know, be something that would be so important for me, for the way I play. Um, okay, let's see. You have to practice five hours a day. No, I don't. I wish I did. <laughs> Honestly, with all the different, like, I wish I could have time to practice five hours a day, but with, like, you know, trying to write music, I'm doing a lot of writing sessions and, you know, filming for TikTok and streaming and making costumes and prepping a tour and doing interviews and, like, also trying to sleep. There's just a lot. Um, okay. Um, someone is asking for, um, I'm going to play Lost Girls. And I think it'd be kind of fun. I did this once before. I did it with the arena, I believe. But I'm going to talk you through kind of the choices that I made when I was writing the song um, and how it tied into the music video. Because sometimes I have um, an idea for a music video and I'll go into the studio with that idea and I'll tell the producer that I'm working with, this is what we're writing about today. And so Lost Girls was an example of that. Um, I had already written Shatter Me and Shatter Me ends with this ballerina breaking free from her snow globe and like she looks out and there's this beautiful nature scene and she's just like, okay. And it ends as she's looking into like this whole new world that she's just discovered. And so Lost Girls then is about her journey as she goes through this world and it's, it's exciting and it's, it's beautiful. And she's seeing things she's never seen before. She's smelling a flower for the first time. Um, but then she starts to realize that not only is life beautiful when you're vulnerable, because before she was trapped inside her snow globe. And so she couldn't experience this beauty, but also it protected her. And for me, that was like anorexia. It kept me trapped, but it also made me in a weird way feel safe. And so going out into the open world, yeah, it's more beautiful, but also when you're vulnerable, it opens you up to more sadness and betrayal and loss and all these other feelings that are hard. Um, and so anyways, this song was basically about relapse. And about how with anything, whether it's overcoming, you know, drug addiction, alcoholism, anorexia, whatever, when you are in recovery, sometimes it's really easy to want to go back into your snow globe. Okay, so this is Lost Girls. So it starts out with this little chime in the track. Oh, actually, it's, it's chime and pizzicato. I kind of wanted it to feel a little bit the same way Shatter Me starts with like this music box, which we used an actual like chime that is like a music box to make that. Like the producer like played it in the studio like ding, ding like a little xylophone. Um, but Lost Girls, I wanted it to feel that same kind of an intro, but I wanted it to feel light instead of heavy. Shatter Me was heavy. And this one, I wanted it to feel magical because at the beginning I was like, I, I imagined myself and you'll see in the music video, like running through the forest and like <gasps> seeing a hummingbird and all that stuff. Mm. So that was why it starts with like a music box ish type sound, but I made it light instead of heavy. And then, yeah, the first part is just kind of like sweet. Even the production behind it, the chords, it's like kind of sweet. Is I, and it's something that's nice because it's a little harder for a vocalist to do this and it's 
really easy for a violinist. Um, you play up an octave. You know, you introduce the main melody. Then you go up. And anytime you go up on the violin, it makes it sound a little sweeter, a little more tugging at the heartstrings in like a less of a like somber way, but like a oof, like almost it sounds like the violin is like emoting, like it's almost crying, but I wanted it still to stay in that sweet spot because she's like still in her discovery mode. All of a sudden, there's this like, and the track is like, whoo, and I told the producer that this is the part where it's like, she kind of experiences her first moment of like, this world is a little scary. I don't know where I fit in here. And, um, she, and so in this part, we even in the music video, we changed the lighting. We waited till it was, we filmed the first part in, in daylight. In this part, we started to film as the sun went down, so it's dusk, and so it's, we, we colored it more blue, so you automatically feel like, oof, this ominous feeling through not only the music, but what you see. It's amazing how like tones, colors, chords, they just make you think differently, and they make you feel differently, you know, even though we don't always know it. So anyways, um, Okay, so the, all of a sudden it's like, and then you hear that voice, which it's funny, the, the words I say, lost girls, lost girls, <laughs> lost girls. Um, I sang that in the studio. I, we just had, oh, I knew I wanted some kind of a vocal thing over that part, but I didn't know what I was going to say. And so I just put on the headphones and I didn't know what melody I was going to do, but I just started singing that, saying, lost girls, lost girls find a way, lost girls. And, um, you know, and, and it was funny, the producer looked at me and he's like, I love that. And I was like, really? You don't think I need to write better lyrics? And he's like, no, that's, that's great. I love that. And anyways, so that's, the song wasn't even going to be called Lost Girls originally. Um, it's just something that came out as I was just like improvising, making something up, which is always fun when that happens. Um, but yeah, so this is the part where it's creeping in the music video. I see it's Ashley and Melise and they're dressed up at these little magical mean elves and it's kind of supposed to represent betrayal that moment so i see them um and then you know it goes into a more like upbeat part because i start to try to dance with them and be like part of them And then um, it's funny because in the music video, the you know, first I'm just trying to dance with them and I'm like kind of messing up, I'm falling down, I'm tripping um, as they dance around me. And even at one point they like kind of hiss at me a little bit. And it was fun because uh, towards the end of it, they like rip my skirt and they push me to the ground. And um, my stylist was on set, just, you know, making sure everything was cool. And her daughter was with her and her daughter was like ah, four years old. And her daughter kept saying, why is she pushing her to the ground? Like, she was so sad. Why are they being mean to her? <laughs> like, she didn't quite understand that this was like a music video because she's just like, why do they keep doing that? It was so sweet. Um, but, uh, yeah, so actually, fun fact, right now I'm auctioning off some of my costumes. They're on eBay. And this dress that I, it was the dress I wore in Shatter Me. It's also the same dress that's in Lost Girls. And um, it's on eBay for auction, as well as a couple other costumes. So you can type exclamation auction to go to that link and you can bid on it if you'd like. But um, it's very, it's dirty, it's stained because literally, and it's ripped because the dancers were ripping the skirt and pushing me to the ground. And throughout the music video, I get more and more because this was dusk and now we go into night. And so this is just the beginning of her journey. Um, and 
you know, the, so yeah, the costume's pretty beat up, but that's what's kind of cool about it is literally I ran around the woods and got dirty and fell down and tripped and, you know, yeah, it's, someone says you were pretty muddy. Yes, I was. Anyways, so um, are there other ways to support besides the auction? Oh, just being here, just hanging out with me. Th that's how you support. I appreciate you being here. Like you guys don't, I don't need, you know, I don't want anyone to feel like in order to support me, you have to donate money or pay, like, um, you know, I wanted to offer something that I felt would be of value that if people wanted, you know, and also, you know, of course the money will help, you know, us buy new costumes for tour. We're reinvesting it into new costumes, but just being here makes me so happy. Uh, you guys coming to shows, that makes me over the moon. You guys sharing my stuff, that's, that's all the support and love and that's more than I could ever hope for. So thank you for just being supportive and coming to my shows and, you know, sharing my, my things. Okay. So I appreciate you streaming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, okay. The next chorus, we repeat the melody from the first verse, but this time there was a beat in it. There's a do, 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 just like this, like, um, sub kick you hear, um, it kind of drives it a little bit and the chords are a little, or the sounds in the background are a little bit darker. Um, because um, at this point, the ballerina has come in tonight, and so I wanted it to feel a little creepier. And I knew that. I Like like I said, I, I already had the story in mind. I knew it was gonna turn night, and I knew that she was gonna find other ballerinas in the forest. And that's what, this was my favorite part of the video. I'm sorry, I'm talking so much, but this was my favorite part of the video because I think this is so relatable. As she's running through the forest, she stops because she sees these ballerinas. And they're not dirty like her. She sees them in these perfect snow globes. And they're so beautiful and they're dancing and they're poised and they're perfectly clean. And um, she looks at them and she looks at herself and she's like, I am dirty. My dress is ripped. You know, and you can tell in my mind, I was trying to convey the thought that she's like seeing this perfect image and now wishing she was still like that. And I can relate to that when you get triggered or you see some p other people doing the things that maybe you used to do or, or even just looking at social media and seeing someone in their perfect, you know, their perfect lens that makes you wish that you were more like that and that suddenly you're dirty and you're not pretty enough and you're not good enough, you know. And so even at one point she puts her hand on the snow globe and her arm becomes clean because she's remembering that she used to be in there. and. She's being given this illusion of magic that if she was still in there, maybe she would be beautiful and perfect too. Um, but then she gets scared and she starts running through the forest. It's raining. She's getting more and more dirty. I'm tripping and falling. Okay, so this is when she's seeing the ballerinas. starts to blow and a storm is coming. Lost girls find a way. Because that's the ominous part. Lost girls. And that's when she's trying to look like the ballerinas and it's getting stormy. And then it thunders and lightnings. Um, and it's kind of fun because the thunder hits right on the music video because kind of like shatter me that whole story just from shatter me all the way through lost girls meant so much to me in terms of like my own personal battles that i faced in the past and you know so after at this point i'm as dirty as i get like literally we kept throwing mud on me i was um you know we kept spraying me with water so i was like soaking wet so dirty and you know the ballerina is pretty sad at how she looks and she's just like I should have, you know, she's probably thinking, I should have never left my snow globe. 
and this is too hard. This is scary. I've been betrayed. I've been hurt. I'm alone. I'm lonely, which are all feelings we face when we put ourselves out there to be vulnerable. And when we don't mask our insecurities with things like, you know, drugs or alcohol or mental diseases, like all those things, they can kind of mask and numb stuff. But when we're vulnerable, we realize all these things. So anyway, she's standing there. And then all of a sudden this witch comes out of the forest and you know, I like fairy tale stuff. So this felt very fairy tale to me. And the witch basically motions to her to stand on this pedestal. And then she starts to make a snow globe appear around her. And again, this was um, supposed to be like a really kind of creepy part of the song. Also really sad. And there's this pause. And I left that pause there because she's thinking. Because as the snow globe forms around her, she's having flashbacks. And she remembers, you know, and I even use the shattered music video. She's having flashbacks to shatter me and remembering how trapped she felt. And so she decides that last minute as the snow globe is almost closing, she says, lost girls find a way. And again, that bam happens right as the snow globe cracks because she decides she doesn't want to stay in it. another ballerina that has one of the ballerinas from earlier she finds her in the forest and she is surrounded by broken glass and you realize that she has just broken free from her snow globe and she's like just looking into the forest and so I walked up to her and we leave the forest together you know to help each other so anyways um I, I really liked that music video um, love all the shifts in the song makes it sound so dramatic. Thank you. I like to like change the mood in my writing quite a bit. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to play guardian now. Also guardian, you guys know is the instrumental version of lose you now. Um, I hope you guys have heard my new single lose you now with Mako. It's really, really gets me in the heart every time. Um, and also as well on the auction, we have the Shatter Me and the Lost Girls dress. We have some costumes from tours. We have all the elements outfit. We also have the little fox from Lose You Now, the little stuffed animal I was carrying around with me. So um, you can type uh, you can type exclamation auction into the chat to um, go look at those and see if you want any of them. So fun. Um, how is my parrot doing? Well, Principe is having a rough time. I think we're going to have to I think I, I will think I keep I will keep Prince Pesa, or maybe that'll be a future auction item. Maybe. Maybe. I don't I know. Her. I kind of like Prince Pesa. I think I'm going to leave her in the house. Need to get a new one, but we need a new one. And um, when that time comes, not yet, I will be asking for names. Um, <laughs> I really like Prince Pesa. Prince Pesa. Um, but will she be on tour? But she will be on tour, right? No, I think she's I think she's getting retired from tour. However, Luna will be on tour. How did you make the costumes for Lose You Now? Oh, um, I did not make those. I um, talked to a designer out of, ooh, I don't, I don't remember where he, ooh, I forget where he's from, but he's from somewhere overseas. And I found him through Instagram. And so I messaged, or yeah, messaged him and I was like, oh my gosh, I love your clothes. Like, can we, like, we collaborate? So he sent me a bunch of clothes to wear. Um, his name is Demo Benza. Demo Benza, I think. Yeah, yeah Demo Benza. The yes, video. I talk about in the behind the scenes. Their stuff, his stuff is so cool. Like the glasses, everything I wore was from his his uh, design. Um, okay. Um, ooh, Carol the Bells. I'll do that. I'm gonna do Guardian, and then I'm gonna do Carol the Bells.
That one's so fun to play. Um, that one just makes me really happy. It makes me feel really free. Um, and you know what's interesting? It's called Guardian because I wrote it about my guardian angels. And, you know, specifically, I don't know why, but it like I felt like it embodied my dad, the original Guardian song. And it's interesting because when my sister listened to my album through the first time, she was like, my favorite song is Guardian. She said, because it reminds me of dad. And I was like, oh my gosh. And it's just amazing how even a song without words can carry such strong meaning and intention. And I do put intention and meaning into every song I write. And, um, and I think that that comes across, maybe it comes across through the way I play it. Maybe it's through the melodies. I'm not sure, but it was just so cool that, um, yeah, she felt that. And I truly do believe that guardian angels are around us all the time. You know, and I, I feel like I've always believed that, but I never really thought about it much until I lost people. You know, losing my dad, losing my best friend um, has made me look more for signs. And I, I, I love to look for signs because it makes me feel close to them. And I love choosing to believe that they're still around me and that it makes me feel stronger. It makes me feel powerful. It makes me feel hopeful. You know, and it, when I'm scared, it makes me feel courageous. Um, and so that's all the things I wanted to embody into Guardian and then Mako, I told him about this and so he took Guardian and he wrote lyrics to it to encompass all the things that I was just talking about and he wrote the words for Lose You Now um, and just was able to capture in words things that I was never able to put into lyrics. Um, so I'm very grateful to him for that. Um, I saw some people saying that they heard, someone was like, I heard this at the OC Fair. That was the first time I ever played it live. Um, and then I saw other people saying they, they remember hearing this for the first time on the um, VR concert I did, which was, I guess, the very first time I played it live, but the, other, the OC Fair was the first time in front of a live audience. Um, oh, gosh. Shayla, Sam. Um, I'm so... Er, Shelley, Sh Shelley, Shelley, Sam. I'm so sorry. Um, your dad's funeral was yesterday. I just want to say, like, oh my gosh, I I know how heavy your heart must be right now. Um, and I know that the pain feels indescribable. And I remember after, you know, my losses, it felt almost like I'd never be happy again. But I promise you that you will be able to turn those memories right now that are very painful they will become sweet again and you know you will be able to um you'll be able to feel full again I promise a piece of you will always be with them or with him but you yourself will be able to feel like your heart just grew even though like a little piece is still missing there you'll feel full again I promise and I'm so so sorry that you're going through all this pain right now love you um Okay, uh, look at the look at the look at the Um, I see, I think it's the same person. Cami keeps asking, You don't play crystallized dubstep version on tour. Why? My crew was actually just talking about this the other day. They're like, Why do you keep doing the orchestral version? I'm like, Because I like it. <laughs> we staged a strike. So, yes, it will maybe, maybe be returning because. My crew felt the same way, so <laughs> I was like, "Oh, I thought everybody liked the orchestral version." What, what you do? But it, maybe it's time to go back. Um, okay, someone was asking for "Between Twilight," which is, I think, the sweetest of all the melodies I've ever written. I think it's the prettiest song I've ever done. I love these melodies. This is the song um, that's the lullaby of the moon. I think it's like the moon is looking down on us and like telling us it's okay. Sometimes I get covered up in shadow too. Sometimes I wonder if I'm strong enough to shine in the dark. And sometimes the moon may think, sometimes I'm not strong enough, but it is. And it rem the moon reminds me that just because we're having a hard time or a dark day or feeling depressed or whatever, just because I feel like I'm covered in shadow, doesn't mean that I'm not still there because even if we can't see the moon's fullness, it's always fully there. So this is the moon reminding us how special and how strong and how full of light we are, no matter what phase we feel like we're in.
don't worry. I'm so sorry for Carol the Bills. They will play it next. I saw that in the comments. What about Carol, Lindsay? <laughs> and yes, again, I, close your eyes and you'll see me dancing with Derek Huff, that attractive ballroom man. <laughs> right here do 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 do
Laura. Um, so, do -do -do -do. backflip during this video was crazy insane. I've never done a backflip. Maybe you're talking about yellow card and I missed the conversation. <laughs> Because the yellow card violinist, he would do backflips, but sadly, I don't think I've ever done a backflip in my life. Um, you know, back in trampoline days, I could do a good front flip, but that's... Maybe that's what we could do next. Trampoline? No, I was just backflip while playing violin. Oh, uh, oh, um... Mm, uh, <laughs> uh, let's see... Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I saw... Um, dang it, there... Oh, someone was saying, only 220 days till Christmas. Yes. Oh, dang it. <laughs> but this year is going by so fast, so it'll be here before we know it. <laughs> Laura in the house! <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to play now. I, I saw some people sing Masquerade, and I feel like playing Masquerade, so we're going to do that. show to be like change of key Ooh, here we go especially because it goes into like a really nasty key but it just sounded so fun like to do it I, I had to do it even though I was like this takes into a terrible key just knocking it up just a half step Ooh, I love it when songs do that and they used to do that a lot but people don't do that much in music anymore so um, yeah it's fun and someone else was saying that they love this song live this one was so fun live we had such a blast doing it because it allowed us to get into character and feel very grand and spectacular and fabulous, if you know what I mean. Um, so, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, I see. You guys were talking about Melise doing a backflip. I was like, I'm pretty 
sure I didn't do a backflip in that music video. That makes sense. Um, someone says that keychain makes the song, right? Any music, any music videos coming? Well, I'm actually planning uh, several right now. I'm hoping to get two done before I go on tour. I was going to try to do three, but just was a little ambitious. So I think I'm going to do two. Um, and I'm very excited. So we're starting to plan. We just literally yesterday were like, okay, we can officially do this. Like we got the date, we got the place. And so I'm starting to costume away and get done. All right. Sleepwalking. into the session and I said I want to write a song called sleepwalking and um, and I explained to them that I sometimes I feel like when we're asleep and we start to dream um, I think sometimes they sometimes dreams are just weird and hokey but other times I think they can give you deep insight into how you actually feel and especially because in the Artemis story Artemis has these really vivid dreams that start to like guide her and help her find out who she is So by the way guys if you don't know I have a comic book issue 4 just came out by the way So you can check that out on my website um, But I've been working so hard on the story and the album for um, The Artemis album was supposed to be kind of like the soundtrack behind the comic book and the story And so because Artemis is having these really vivid dreams um I thought to myself, you know, maybe sometimes some of the clearest steps you take are taken while you're sleepwalking if you're getting all this guidance and um, so that's why in the song you keep hearing sleepwalking, you know um, and originally we actually wrote full lyrics to the song um, but then I realized that I just wanted it to be instrumental and the only thing we kept was sleepwalking and yes, someone asked earlier if that's me singing and that is me saying sleepwalking sleepwalking um but yeah, the same way, the reason I put that into the story of Artemis is because I do believe that we get guidance sometimes from other places, you know, whether it's from God or from our guardian angels, you know, I think that that wisdom can come to different people in different ways. And so sometimes perhaps it's when we let go and we stop letting our own intuition fully dictate everything and we like allow ourselves to be guided. So kind of like sleepwalking. Anyways, uh, also this music video, can I just say... Lindsay was there. It was a it was a nightmare. It was a disaster. It was a long day. It was a really long day. We filmed it the day after I filmed the We Three Kings video, which was also a bit of a disaster. So it was so exhausting because um, when I say disaster, I just mean that people that were supposedly doing things to prepare the video did not do the things, and so nothing was ready, and it was just a hectic day of trying to play catch up. And so, anyways, I still have snow in my violin case, actually, from that day. Snow was everywhere. The snow machine we got was broken. Did you know that? Yes, oh yeah. Yeah, so it was only able to go on full blast. <laughs> so we turned it on, and I was like, I wanna light. I mean, it ends up looking beautiful in the video, we used the shots, but they had to like put the snow in delicately because that thing was blasting out this snow. And me and the dancers, also it was sticky and it's like going in our eyes. And so we're all trying to like, you know, I'm trying to play and dance and the snow is like, guk, 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 um, and literally just blowing us away. So it was just funny that it felt like everything went wrong, but yet somehow it turned out really beautiful. Oh, we get to the end of the day. We're almost out of time. We're about to film the scene and no one had filled up the pool like of water. 
and that's that was gonna take like 45 minutes to fill and i'm like no one filled this up because we were filming over there anyways it was just one of those things where it was like can anyone just do their job <laughs> we all have a job to do i just need everybody to do their job but why was your why did you rent a broken snow machine well we didn't know it was broken we are, we rented a snow machine and then when it arrived and they left and we plugged it in. It was definitely broken and that it, we didn't have time to do anything about it. So we just dealt with it. Okay, so I'm gonna finish playing sleepwalking. By the way, I say this a lot, but the second verse is my favorite to write because you get to take that original melody and you get to make it better. So is the melody, so. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining. Yes, I am on Twitch and I quite enjoy it. Also, I want to call out some people. Dang it, they disappeared, some of them. But um, thanks for Zeliad for subscribing. Thanks for Melina K for giving out two subs. Uh, thanks, Shake and Bake, for giving out a, a sub. And uh, Krakus for cheering. Anonymous Gifter gifted something. Thank you. And Sir Choir. Choir, um, subscribe, thank you so much. And Kinsbane, subscribe. So thank you for your subscriptions. Thanks for following, thanks for being here. I just realized uh, that we've got 20,000 followers here in our group, so please follow. Thank you for following. Um, uh, have you ever had a huge, huge mess up on tour? Asked Twilight Lindsay. Um, yeah, which one do you wanna hear about? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. There's so many. I think you guys have heard me tell the lift story so many times where I got stuck on an 18-foot lift and, like, they couldn't get it down. Literally, they had to bring, like, mid-song, I'm up there playing, and I'm like, it's supposed to be going down now. It's supposed to be going down. And the song ends, and I'm just up there. And the audience stops clapping. You know, they clap, and then the clapping dies down, and I'm like, what do I do? I'm still just stuck up here, and I have no microphone. So I just yelled, I'm stuck! And the audience laughed, but then everyone's like, well, what do we do now? But then it was actually really funny because they had to get a ladder and get me down and it turned into a whole thing and it was quite, it's actually a really funny memory. Um, so let's see other funny stories from tour. Um, my first, my, well, one of my first tour, no, on my first tour, it was like my third show into the tour and um, the power just went out after we played one song and it's, Funny, because I couldn't tell if my ears had just gone out. We have in-ear monitors, and so I was like, is it just that I can't hear it? Or finally, you look into the eyes of the audience, and you're like, yeah, I'm still jumping around and playing, and I don't think anyone can hear me. Um, so that was kind of funny, and I just, like, it, it was my birthday that week, so the crowd sang me happy birthday and, like, all this stuff, because it was just dark. It was pretty dark, and there was no sound, so I couldn't talk to them. But um, anyways, within five minutes, they got the power up. But anyways, so many stories. Like, I remember one time my my pack was on my pants and um back in the day and my pants were just I guess they'd just gotten a little bit loose and they were literally falling down while I was playing and I was trying to like widen my leg stance to keep them up because I kept pulling them up but then they kept just like sinking down a little bit you know you know that feeling but here I am playing in front of people on stage like my pants are having a hard time staying up try concentrating when that happens we've had zippers fail mid-show like I can't I, I could go on and on do you ever throw your back out? No, not yet. No, 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 not, never. <laughs> um, 
Thanks, Forgotten Eclipse, for subscribing. Um, you always keep the show going, though. Yes, I do, Carly. Somehow we always keep it going. Um, who's my favorite Marvel character? Um, Thor. A hundred thousand percent. I love you, Thor. <laughs> Chris Hemsworth, you're my favorite. <laughs> um, Thor Ragnarok is my favorite Marvel movie, I think. So good. Um, have you ever fall? Have you ever fallen on stage once? Once I fell. So embarrassing. I just was like running backwards and playing and just whoop! Right on my butt. Boop, boop, boop. And I fell hard too. It was pretty funny. I'm so glad I didn't break a tailbone. Um, bow technique tips. Um, this is a good exercise. They're called TikToks, actually. That's what my teacher called them. But you're just um, holding the bow like you would, you know? And then you practice letting it, using your pinky to, so you're not going like this, you know? You're keeping your wrist completely still, your arm completely still, and you're using your hand and your pinky. And your thumb is like a little lever, so your thumb is like the hinge point. That's a great technique. Also, this is a good technique that helps you get dexterity and like flexibility in your hands. So like you're just doot, 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 doot. Um, and then I would say just practicing full bows. There's also bowing technique books I would, rec you know, that you should look into and get one. Um, tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, I used to say that as I did it. Tick tock, tick tock. Pineapple on pizza? Yes. It's not my favorite pizza, but yes, it like, why not? I like pineapple on almost anything. I'm a big sweet and savory fan, so yes, pineapple on pizza, um, 100%. My favorite pizza, though, I always go back to just a margarita pizza, but I put pesto on it. Mmm, margarita pizza with pesto, so good. Oh, what's my favorite song to play growing up? Fiddle music. <laughs> of a few different fiddle songs that I liked together when I was like a teenager and it, that was like my favorite thing to play and I'd get frustrated with my classical music I'd just be like <laughs> my mom's like Lindsay <laughs> she knew that meant that I wasn't practicing what I was supposed to be practicing um, but actually my mom was great at supporting me she um, supporting me in playing the fun stuff too I think that's really important and she knew that she knew that it was important for me to practice the stuff that I was supposed to practice but also um, you know, have fun with it and write and be creative. Um, do I watch TV series? I was never a TV person until COVID and now I love TV like too much. Right now I'm watching Nashville, super drama, super drama. And, um, it's about the music industry, you know, and country music and it's really good. The music in it is so good if you like country music. So I'm just going to say I'm liking Nashville, but yeah, I've become a, like at night I love to just unwind by like answering emails or doing things, or sometimes I'll be on like, oh, I'll answer questions on Discord or something. Oh, by the way, join my Discord. It just got official. We just got, uh, what is it called? Uh, um, we are not partnered, but uh, affiliates? Uh, 
affiliate. Yeah. So I'm a, I have an official, like it's been my official discord, but now we're like, um, verified. verified. I was like, what's the word? It's like a thing. I am now verified, um, on discord. So please, you can type exclamation discord into the chat and it will take you there. It's a really fun community. Also, if you subscribe, you get to be a part of the subs only section of the discord. And I go there and I answer questions every week. So, and we plan on the Discord community being a place where this summer on tour, a lot of stuff is happening. And yes. A lot of the community is going to get brought together, giveaways, fun things, games. Yes. Going. Also, yeah. it'd be fun to see like there's a, a meet and greet section so people can post their pictures from meet and greets there. Um, you know, I know it's just a really fun community. And yeah, we do plan on being really active on it, especially while I'm on tour. Also, we're going to start every once in a while doing giveaways. Someone was asking me if I was going to do giveaways today. Um, not doing giveaways today. Um, that was kind of a special thing for last Twitch. We gave away, or last, yeah, last Twitch stream, we gave away a ton of stuff. Um, so if you want to see stuff in the future, we're going to be doing giveaways on Discord. I'm great. I'm like, not TikTok, not Twitch, not Instagram. Ugh, Discord. Um, what's my favorite song on Nashville? I don't know. Like, I, I couldn't even tell you. They're all so good. But I really like the show. Okay. Oh, wow. We've been going for two hours. Just realized that. Ah. Okay, just doing one last song. I'm going to do Dark Side. Um... Cherry, you're asking about a costume making session. Yes, we're going to do one on Friday. As well as on Friday, we're going to be making costumes and then we'll go into um, the live, the auction that's happening on eBay for my costumes. By the way, you can check that out, exclamation auction. Um, but uh, it's ending then, so we'll have like a live stream of the ending of the auction. It could be kind of fun while we're making costumes. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
costumes that was a lot of fun last time and let's see what else did I want to say oh someone was asking am I nervous to go on tour after so many tours you know I always get a little nervous for every show I'm not gonna lie and especially having not toured in a year and a half not doing any shows and not be feeling that energy I am going to be so nervous before those first few shows I know it but I'm gonna also be so excited so I'll be able to counterbalance it with excitement um, so anyways, please come check us out on tour. You can type exclamation tour into the chat. It'll take you so you can see all the tour dates because they're all up and it's a US tour. We're going all over the place and I cannot wait. Um, also, um, please join our Discord. We just got verified, that's the word. Just got verified and I'm, I'm stoked about that. So please join our Discord community. It's a great community and I love um, engaging with you guys on there. Also, I have a subs only section of the Discord and I answer everybody's questions on there. All right. Thanks. I'll see you Friday. Have a great day.